What is up guys and welcome back to another video and today we are going to cover 10 insane Batman conspiracy theories that could be true. Coming in at number 10 we have the Joker is Batman's older brother. For years now, fans have been wondering why the Joker is so obsessed with Batman. There are plenty of heroes in the DC universe who don't have any powers but for some reason the Joker only targets Batman. What if there was a reason as to why these characters are so drawn to each other? It's been shown many times throughout the comics and movies that Batman and the Joker are two sides of the same coin. Maybe the purpose of this was to show that there is a much deeper connection between them than most people would think. According to this theory, Bruce Wayne had an older brother named Thomas Wayne Jr. who became insane after a brain injury. Bruce never heard of him because the Waynes sent the Joker away to Arkham Asylum when he was extremely young. Once he escaped, he started to go after Batman for having the life he wished he had. Since the concept of Batman having a long lost brother has appeared in the comics before, it wouldn't be that far fetched to believe that the Joker may be related to him. Also, this may prove why the Joker is much more interested in toying around with Batman than killing him. Number 9, each villain represents a different part of his personality. Even if Batman isn't your favorite superhero, you can admit that there's no character in the DC or Marvel Universe who has a better rogue gallery than him. Over time, fans came to the realization that there must be a psychological component behind each villain. Maybe they're supposed to be a symbol of Bruce Wayne's fractured psyche. This theory shows that each villain represents an aspect of Batman's personality and explains what he could have become if he didn't choose to become a crime fighter. Let's start off with Batman's most well known villain, the Joker. Even though the Joker doesn't have a definite origin, many fans assume that he probably suffered from some sort of tragedy similar to how Bruce witnessed the death of his parents. Rather than training himself to fight evil like Batman, the Joker decided to take the opposite route. He allowed his dark urges to turn him into one of the most evil characters in the DC Universe. So in a way, the Joker represents what could have happened to Batman if he wasn't able to handle the death of his parents. Two-Face represents how easily Batman could descend into madness if it becomes too much for him to switch between being a superhero and being Bruce Wayne. Penguin represents what could have happened if Bruce allowed money and fortune to corrupt him. When Batman is fighting these villains, he's actually fighting one of his inner demons. This may be able to explain why Batman is unwilling to kill any of them. Number 8, Bane wanted to help Batman. After the first viewing of The Dark Knight Rises, everyone would agree that Bane is a villain. If you were to watch that movie multiple times and find the deeper meanings within it, you may find out that there's much more to his story. This theory states that Bane's actions were actually meant to make Batman become a better person. Bane knew that Gotham needs to have a superhero and he viewed Batman as the perfect man to put an end to crime and corruption. He came up with a plan to show Batman why he needs to continue protecting the city while also convincing the citizens of Gotham that Batman is a hero. This is why Bane was willing to do absolutely anything to bring back Batman back into the light. Bane forces Bruce to put on the cape and cowl by taking over the League of Shadows and conquering Gotham. He pretended to be evil for Gotham's long term best interest. Though there are some plot holes to this theory, it's still interesting to take a look at it. Number 7, Batman killed the Joker in The Dark Knight Returns. The Joker paralyzed Barbara Gordon, took inappropriate pictures of her, killed Jason Todd by repeatedly hitting him with a crowbar and released an airborne disease in Gotham City that caused people to become violent. No matter how many times the Joker terrorizes the city and hurts the people that Batman cares about the most, he still refuses to kill him. Batman is known for having a no kill rule which is why so many people get upset when they see him killing people in comics or movies. In The Dark Knight Returns, Batman attempts to kill the Joker but only ended up breaking his spine because he wasn't able to fully finish the job. Even though the Joker kept trying to drive Batman to the edge, he still managed to gain control and stop himself from doing something he was going to regret. Since the Joker knew that the police were going to arrive soon, he snapped his own neck to make it seem like Batman did it. Some fans found it difficult to believe that the Joker managed to snap his own neck while being paralyzed, which is why they decided to create a theory to explain what really happened. This theory states that Batman was responsible for killing the Joker but can't accept the fact that he finally killed the Joker. 
Because he's in denial, he hallucinated the entire conversation between him and the Joker. In order to make himself feel better, he chose to believe that the Joker killed himself. Number 6, Robin is the contingency plan for Batman. Batman may not have superpowers such as flight, strength, and speed, but he does have the intelligence to come up with extremely well thought out plans. In the comic book storyline Tower of Babel, it's revealed that Batman has secret plans that only shows the weaknesses of each Justice League member, but also explains how to defeat them in a fight. Batman created these plans because he wanted to make sure he felt prepared in the case any of these members decided to turn their back against the team by joining the dark side. If Martian Manhunter became evil, Batman would convert the outer layer of his skin into magnesium, which would cause him to burst into flames. If Flash became evil, Batman would strike the back of his neck with a specially designed Vibra bullet, causing him to have seizures at light speed. If Aquaman became evil, Batman would cause him to become hydrophobic by altering a form of Scarecrow's fear toxins. The list of superheroes he's made a plan for goes on and on, but it doesn't really give that well of an explanation as to how Batman can be defeated. As many people know, one of Batman's biggest fears is turning evil. What if Bruce puts so much time and effort into training Robin because he wants someone to keep him in check? If Batman were to ever become a villain, he would need a superhero to fight him, and who better to do that than the person who was trained by Batman himself? Some can even argue that there is no one who knows Batman more than Robin. Just think about it, Robin knows all of his combat techniques, gadgets, secrets, and weaknesses. Robin may not be the strongest superhero in the DC Universe, but he's probably the one who can figure out a way to stop Batman. Number 5. Bruce Wayne died at the end of The Dark Knight Rises Near the ending of The Dark Knight Rises, Batman is presumed dead after Bane's atomic bomb explodes along with Batman in the Batplane. Later on, we figure out that he's still alive after Alfred found him in Florence. This was shocking to the fans because they weren't given the slightest hint that Batman escaped, nor was there any reason to believe that he had enough time to get away from the blast. As fans were trying to figure out how Batman survived, they realized something seemed a little off. Earlier in the film, Alfred explained what he used to think about when Bruce left Gotham for 7 years. He said, Every year, I took a holiday. I went to Florence. I had this fantasy that I would look across the tables and I'd see you there. You wouldn't say anything to me, nor me to you, but we'd both know that you made it. That you were happy. What if this final scene was in Alfred's imagination? Since he wasn't able to accept the fact that Bruce died, he tried to picture him having a happy life in Florence. This would make perfect sense because it can be used to explain Alfred's reaction. Instead of looking super happy, all he did was give a small smile and nodded his head. Number 4. Heath Ledger's Joker knows he's in a movie Deadpool is known for constantly breaking the fourth wall, but what if there's a character in the DC Universe who shares the same characteristic? If you pay close attention to the Joker's lines in The Dark Knight, you'll notice that it seems like he's aware of the fact that he's in a movie. This would perfectly explain why he's always one step ahead of the entire Gotham City Police Department. In the opening scene, the Joker robs a bank with several thieves. Just as one of the thieves is about to kill the bus driver, the Joker stops him by saying, No, no, I kill the bus driver. This implies that the Joker knew the other person was going off script and needed to make sure that he was corrected. Another scene that supports this theory is when the Joker visits Harvey Dent in the hospital. This is when he says, do I really look like a guy with a plan? From the perspectives of Batman and Two-Face, it may seem like the Joker's actions are random and chaotic, but the audience knows that this isn't true. We're the only ones who can see his full plan because everything the Joker does is for the audience. Just take a look at his last scene. When Batman throws the Joker off the building, he uses his grappling hook to prevent him from hitting the ground. This is when the Joker says, You see? Madness, as you know, is like gravity. All it takes is a little push. The music begins to rise and for a split second, the audience thinks he's going to cut the rope. A few moments later, he begins laughing because he knew he managed to trick the audience into believing that he was going to die. Number 3. Bruce Wayne Causes His Parents To Die Out of every theory on this list, this is definitely the one that will completely change the way you look at Batman. In this theory, Batman found himself in a different time period after defeating the ultimate evil of the DC Universe. 
His suit was destroyed, so he put on some ragged clothes and began walking down a dark alley. In the distance, he saw a younger version of himself walking with his parents. He waited for Joe Chill to arrive and kill his parents, but he never showed up. Instead, his parents took a quick glance at Bruce before walking past him. After shoving his hand in his pocket and finding a cold metal object, Bruce realized he was sent back to this moment. He knew that Batman would never exist if he didn't go through with the tragedy of losing his parents. Leaving him with no other choice, Batman makes the biggest sacrifice of his life by pulling the gun out of his pocket and shooting his parents. This caused him to lose his mind and join the dark side. He jumped into the cold water and was later pulled out by the dock workers. The future Bruce Wayne they found in the water had pale skin and green hair with no ID card. All he had was a signature laugh. So in this universe, there are two Bruce Waynes, the younger one who becomes Batman after witnessing the death of his parents, and the older one who becomes the Joker after killing his parents. Number 2, Alfred Pennyworth is Batman's true villain. When most people think about Alfred, they usually associate him as Bruce Wayne's butler, but what if he's more than that? In the comic book storyline Batman R.I.P., there were rumors that Martha Wayne had an affair with Alfred, making him the biological father of Bruce Wayne. Though these rumors were proven wrong, some fans speculate that this could still be a possibility. Some people believe that the main reason why Alfred decided to stick around after the death of Martha and Thomas is because he felt the need to take care of his son. Fans take this theory even further by claiming that Alfred is responsible for the deaths of Bruce's parents. According to the theory, he was so fed up of living a secret life with Martha that he decided to hire a hitman to get rid of Thomas. Unfortunately, it didn't go as planned and Martha ended up getting killed as well. Also, there's another theory that states that Alfred had another motive for killing Bruce's parents. Instead of doing it for the love, he just wanted the Waynes to die so he could have their fortune and wealth. If this was to be true, it would make Alfred one of Batman's biggest villains because he's one of the very few people he trusts. And number one, Batman is a patient at Arkham Asylum. What if Batman didn't become a superhero after the death of his parents? Instead, he became insane because he couldn't handle the pain. He ends up going to Arkham Asylum. The patients and workers represent each villain Batman has to go against. Poison Ivy is the nurse who sedates him when he gets out of control. Killer Croc is another patient in his cell who has a skin disorder. Two-Face is an abusive orderly who acts nice when he's around doctors, but becomes a completely different person when they leave. Penguin is known for providing patients with illegal equipment and tech. Scarecrow is a sleep specialist and a neurologist who runs tests to check on Bruce's recovery. Riddler is a therapist who asks him questions that he finds very frustrating and difficult. Dr. Joe Carr and his assistant, Dr. Harleen Quinzel, view Bruce as their top patient and are willing to do whatever it takes to bring him back to sanity. Bruce refuses to let them help because he believes they are the villains who want to destroy the city. And lastly, Robin is Bruce's brother who is currently running Wayne Enterprises. And that is it for the video guys, as always thanks for watching, we hope you all enjoyed, if you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more, and I'll see you all in the next video.